Good afternoon, Professor Joe Omani here. I'm Professor of Consulting at Cardiff University and advisor to the consulting industry, for those of you who don't know. Um, I had a chat with a, a small client today, just two of them in the firm, and I thought it might be useful for some of you to hear a little bit about that conversation because there are many bumps on the way to success as you grow as a consultancy. And I mean growth in terms of money and numbers. Um, and the first one that you come across is very often um, freeing up time and money in order to, number one, uh, work on the business instead of for the business, and number two, recruit your first person. Um, and I'm going to mention four ways of doing that, of contributing to that. There's lots of other ways, but I think these are the four are the, are the, are the best. Um, so the first thing I would say is working with associates. If you work with associates, working with associates generally isn't, it shouldn't be a business model for an entire company unless there's a very good reason for it, because um, you tend to get lower profit margins off associates and the expertise is not accumulated inside the firm it's accumulated outside the firm and it's not good for your firm to do that. However, working with associates can be a route to getting a bit of money in, getting some larger projects um, and therefore building up the capital that is necessary um, for you to recruit your first person. Now, I've given advice on how to recruit uh, associates and use associates elsewhere, so I won't go into that, but that's number one. Uh, number two is doing repeat business or at least aligned business services. Um, when they start off, a lot of consultancies are running around doing lots of different things just to get the money in. Completely understand that. But the, move, the sooner you can move to standardized, um, uh, productized, or at least repeatable services, doing the same service again and again, the more time you're going to free up. And the reason for that is because if you're doing lots of different things, you've got a learning cycle, you've got an engagement cycle, you've got to come up to speed on different things. You, you, there's, there's very little expertise that you're accumulating. And, and the sooner that you can move to repeating the same service again and again, um, the more time it's going to save you, um, and also the more expertise you're going to accumulate. Um, aligned to that um, is my third point, which is around uh, sell-on services. So small consultancies, because they don't necessarily have the reputation, they spend a lot of time uh, building that pipeline, doing the marketing, trying to get new clients. And it's, you know, you can spend three days a week doing that type of work. And it's, it's really hard and it leaves you no time to work on the business. And it's all time that you could be charging out at. Um, so I would always say, you know, really work on your existing clients. Um, you get their testimonials where you can, but ideally also look for follow on work, but for repeatable business um, and, you know, develop services that once you've done your signature service, if you want to call it that, there's various follow on services and that will save you time in developing new clients. Um, number four um, is to outsource work and I don't mean you know front-end work in terms of working with associates although very often that can be outsourced um, in this case I was talking about this morning um, the partner was doing a lot of research work um, and a lot of that could have been outsourced to someone else even even a bright you know PhD student um, because it doesn't need their involvement if you can outsource that um, obviously, there's going to be a differential in what you're paid, so you can accumulate a bit more money. It also frees you up to be doing other things. I'll also add one other one in that I, I tend not to give because everyone else gives it, but also looking at putting up your prices. When people start in consulting, very often, and this you shouldn't be doing this, but very often they calculate their daily rate by thinking about their old salary um, and what they'd need to charge to make their own salary. Now, that's not how you should be thinking about your pricing. You should be thinking about the value that you're delivering to the client. But also, you've got a whole load of other overheads. You know, you've got to market, you've got to sell, you've got to employ people and all the rest of it. So put your prices up. Anyway, so those are a few tips for very small consultancies that are just, you know, thinking about, well, I'm, I'm just doing stuff all the time. How can I free up time to think about you know what do I need to do as a business to grow but also how can I free up money um, on the outsourcing side um, we can talk about the back office so there's a whole load of platforms that you can use um, Fiverr is one of them Upwork is another 
get yourself a virtual assistant, get them to do the menial tasks for you, um, or the tasks that take a lot of time and don't need a lot of skill, um, including marketing. Need a caveat on that. I, I do realize marketing needs skill, but you know, some of the operational side of marketing, you know, writing ebooks, um, you know, tidying up your blog, uploading stuff to the website, all of that can be done by someone else very cheaply elsewhere. I hope that was useful. Take care. Bye-bye.